Well, I'm sure by now everyone is familiar with Will Duffy and the final experiment. Right now he is in Puta Arenas with a group of Globers and Flat Earthers. And next stop it will be the Antarctic where they're going to test one of the main tenets of the Flat Earth model that there is no 24-hour sun in the Antarctic. Now I do have to give a lot of credit to Will Duffy for not only coming up with the concept, but helping to fund it and organize this. And to me, it has been pretty funny listening to the cognitive dissonance that this has caused in the flat earth community. But I also think it was an experiment that wasn't really necessary. So let me tell you why. Now, when I got into this debate, this was the flat earth sun model. Now, I added the equator in the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, and of course, on the flat Earth model, the Sun orbits around the North Pole. Now, right now, we're about a week away from the December solstice, and the flat Earthers have the Sun correctly moving above the Tropic of Capricorn. Now, it is pretty obvious that if you live south of the Tropic of Capricorn on this model, you would never see the sun to the south of you. And this is why Flat Earth has also claimed that any video of a 24-hour Antarctic sun is fake. Now, this is the sun above the Tropic of Cancer during the June solstice, which is summertime in the Northern Hemisphere. And this is also why you've never heard a flat earther make the claim that any Arctic 24-hour sun video is fake because this supports their model. Now, I can understand why flat earthers think this is the real model because most people live north of the Tropic of Cancer. Now, I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington, and this is the observed sun that I saw during the summer and winter solstice. So, of course, it seems to make logical sense that the observed sun is orbiting around the North Pole. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with suncalc.org. Um, it gives you the same information that timeanddate.com does on the left over here but it also has this interactive graphic. You can put in any date of the year, and with the slider bar on top, you can move the sun through any time of the day, and it will show you the position of the sun in relationship to your location. And I have used it, and it is very accurate. So let's take a look at the observed sun on the June solstice from Seattle. I have the slider bar set at 3 a.m. Now the sun is below the northern horizon and it will rotate clockwise around Seattle. So it rises towards the northeast and then it will be to the south at solar noon. And the sun sets in the northwest and at night it is below the northern horizon as it returns to the east to rise again in the morning. Now let's compare this observed sun path to the sun path I saw when I was in the Southern Hemisphere in New Zealand. Now this is Christchurch, which is on the east coast of the Southern Island. Again, I'm gonna start the sun at 3 a.m., but this time the sun is gonna rotate counterclockwise around Christchurch. So the sun is below the Southern horizon. You see the sun rise towards the Southeast, it will be to the north of you at noon. The sun will set to the southwest. And at night, the sun will be below the southern horizon as it returns to the east to rise again in the morning. Now, just like the observed sun from Seattle, this matches what I saw when I was in the southern hemisphere, a sun that orbits in the complete opposite direction of the observed sun from the northern hemisphere. And another thing to consider is that there's equivalent daylight summer hours for equivalent north-south latitudes. On the left, we have Boise, Idaho, and on the June solstice, they have just over 15 hours and 26 minutes. But in Christchurch, on the right, on their solstice, they just have under 15 hours and 26 minutes. 
So you gotta ask the question, why would we see this if the Earth was flat? I know for me that this is definitely one of the reasons I know we do not live on a flat Earth in that we live on a globe. Now what really baffles me is that there are known flat earthers that do live in the southern hemisphere. From my understanding, Flatzoid lives in South Africa, and I'm assuming that he lives in Cape Town. Now if the earth was flat, this is what Flatzoid should see, a sun that is always to the north of him. But right now, this is what Flatzoid actually sees. And I know this is the truth because I've been to the Southern Hemisphere and seen this myself. So it's pretty obvious that Flatzoid has not given this any critical thought at all. It should be obvious that if you believe in a model where the Sun orbits around the North Pole, then you should see this from all locations on Earth. Now, if you also understand that if you travel farther south during summer in the Southern Hemisphere, and daylight hours get longer, then this observation also supports the idea that there is a 24-hour sun in the Antarctic. So getting back to my original question, is the final experiment necessary? Well, yes, I think this was a great idea that Will Duffy had, and I'm glad that he has a group of flat earthers with him. And hopefully they're not going to have overcast conditions because when they do see the 24-hour sun, I think a lot of flat earthers are going to take a second thought about what they actually believe in. But let's be honest, there's people like Flatzoid who should have been able to figure this out because what he actually observed does not conform to what the flat earth model is. But for some reason, he's allowing himself to be blinded by his own beliefs.